Welcome back to the rest of the story. Well, I'm down in one of the sections down at my place. There's three, technically four sections down here when it comes to the fields. I mean, right now we are actually in the front section. It goes up just over the hill to where my house is. You can all, well, obviously the silos are right there. And this hollow down through here is the divider for the back section. This all the way down through here, clear down to the trees down there. This used to, this had a bunch of bulldozing done to it about 15 years ago, maybe, well, I was about 10 years old. So yeah, about 19 years ago, give or take. And there's a bunch of trees and we had a different couple different uh, field roads to get down through them because this whole hillside up to well, right, right about in there um, was all trees. I mean, it's it was long enough ago that I remember that there used to be trees there, but I can't quite remember everything that was there um, before it got bulldozed out. Now. My four-wheeler is out. It's really been sitting idle most of the year, most of the fall, part of the summer, I guess I should say. I got a few hundred miles on it. I originally bought it to, you know, to ride around on, have fun with, but I really did buy it with a purpose, and that was to check cattle. And down at my place, we do have a four-wheeler, ATV, UTV on every single farm. Uh, Ryan's, my place, and the home farm because more times than not, when the cows get out, you need to have something you can quick, readily jump on and go deal with the cattle situation. And I was dealing with cattle. I had this one because I bought two. Uh, Ryan bought the other one off of me and I just kept the newer one. And this one, I was chasing cattle with four days after I brought it home. We had a cow that had gotten out. It was a, probably about an eight year old cow full of life, full of energy, full of muscle. And what happened was she was running down my driveway. I managed to get down ahead of her and I was trying to chase her back up the driveway and she got her head up underneath the front end, uh, under here actually. You can see we got this nice little opening that she could stick her head up under and she picked the whole front end up of the four wheeler up and stood the four wheeler right on its back end. And it was me standing behind the four-wheeler pushing the four-wheeler back down and it kept her from pushing it right up right up and over and unfortunately i've had a few accidents with these things uh, this one in particular has only had one accident and that was when i was out of my brothers we were mudding messing around and you know that's how most of the awesome accidents usually happen you're doing stuff you're not supposed to and i was whipping donuts and my tires caught and it pulled me over and I managed to get the fuller straightened out but the problem is there was a waterfall <laughs> straight ahead of me and I was going probably 30 40 miles an hour by the time I got <laughs> around to hitting the brake because so I was still hitting the throttle but when I uh, leveled it out and I ran the front end into that rock wall and it destroyed this this and plastic piece so it's about 600 bucks worth of damage overall but as you can see the four-wheeler is perfectly fine i mean i'm gonna have it for many more years i mean we grew up with hondas and we had those for uh 10 20 years 25 years between the two of them and there's a reason i prefer honda uh, for how you sit on them especially these um you don't sit so high on them compared to the polaris at my wife has um, you can do a lot more high speed handling with these typically that's what happens when you're dealing with cows anyway i mean i've turned this one on a dime more than once growing up like i said i've had accidents with them my first accident ever was before all this bulldozing happened i was in second grade it was on an 88 honda and you know i think being that young is what really helped me because straight over you know that corner post right there probably about 30 feet over um, everything back here was was contoured so we had the alternating strips of corn hay oats and you know whatever else 
And after years and years and years of being farmed like that, we were getting erosion. Plus, from the tillage practices we were doing, uh, we actually had about a two foot drop off from one strip to the other on this one strip in particular. I mean, granted, I was second grade, so uh, what was I, six, seven, seven, somewhere in there, seven or eight years old. And um, I had a friend over, and he was on the newer. Uh, nine, I think it was a 98 Honda. And we were riding around on the grass hay, hay strips because we had made a crop of hay. And that's what you do when you're young. You can drive on the hay for a couple days before the hay gets coming back for the next crop. And what we were doing, uh, we were riding around on the strips. And I went to go turn around. And the hay strip was above that two, three foot drop off. And what happened was, is we were coming back around from over there and we wanted to turn back and we wanted to go back across the strip. Well, being young and not all that experienced running four wheelers like that, uh, what happened is, is I turned wide and I ran that front tire over that front right tire uh, over that drop off. And young, you're, you know, Ideally, you probably shouldn't even be driving them when they're that young, but, well, when you're from the country, you tend to do stuff that, you know, maybe isn't exactly approved by a lot of people <laughs> in society, but when you're from the country, that's just kind of stuff that happens. And um, what happened is, is the four-wheeler overturned on me, complete, completely turned upside down, and I was actually underneath the four-wheeler, but for being so young, so small, uh, the little gap between the handlebars and the seat I had this little area right through here and I was able to slide out relatively unscathed I mean shaken up but definitely not hurt um, this one just twice you know the cow incident and anybody that's wondering if you guys watched that video with my dad where he was talking about me getting chased across the pasture uh, that was this pasture right here uh, the trees that i was running are actually gone um, there was a cow and a calf and i was supposed to go get the calf and the problem is my dad being hilarious as he was uh, sent me over to get the calf from a thoroughly pissed off cow and she ended up taking after me and i was actually running between trees up well, they're gone, but they're up in this clearing right here. So, oh, it was probably payback for wrecking the four-wheeler. I don't know, or rolling the four-wheeler. I just had to clean the mud off of it, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, I've had a lot of... Oh, the older you get, the more experiences you have where you have close calls. Close calls are really common, even when you're being careful. I mean, granted, I was being careful when I rolled the four-wheeler down there. That was just... I misjudged the amount of room it would take me to turn. Uh, wrecking this one, I don't know if you call it a wreck. I had an accident, and I just ran into the rock wall. I mean, I had it fixed in two days from the time I ordered the parts to the time it was okay. But, you know, there, yeah, accidents happen. We'll leave it at that. And, actually, the reason I came out here is uh, you guys would want to see the snow is pretty well melted off. I mean, there's some few random spots that are completely insignificant. Uh, but this is everything that I got chiseled the other night. I mean, if I can blind you looking into the sun. But this section where I'm at right now is chiseled. Uh, if I don't know if you guys can see it really well, but there is another section across from the road, the highway at my place, where all that down corn was. And that is approximately at the end of my finger um, before that far tree line i mean you can see the hay field and it's just on the other side of the hay field and um i got that done and that was the last field that i did i could have kept going but the problem is that was the second night i was running i was out for about 20 minutes and i ended up busting a shank on the chisel plow my farm is or the place that i live this farm that i live on is rock city central out of all of our ground and i break a shank every single year and it was kind of unfortunate that it busted on me that night because i didn't get started till eight o'clock and 
Luckily for me, I was able to finish that piece over there, but I hooked a rock and I busted a shank, which I normally break it a shank. If I'm gonna break one, it's typically on this side of the farm, this section just over the hill. And that's my neighbor's place over there. Anybody that's wondering, so that's not us. It's a nice setup though. All right, um, I gotta head out and actually do chores. <laughs> I kind of let them go until the last minute today, and I'm currently running solo. And I thought you guys would want to hear about my four-wheeler a little bit. I would actually like to buy another one someday, but the problem is I don't like the newer designs, the newer Hondas, and put some new tires on her, and she'll run another 20, 30 years. My kids will probably have plenty of opportunities themselves to wreck and destroy this one, and then I'll just go buy a new one. They can run the old beat up one I guess but yeah uh, the tires these are actually oh my gosh four or five five years old you run them on the road too much and that just tears these four wheeler tires up uh, the two wheel drive the four wheel drive selector is really nice I mean you, I hardly ever try, turn on the four wheel drive uh, for the main reason of I don't like tearing my tires up I mean, when it was four-wheel drive all the time on those older four-wheelers, it seems like the tires were always bald. And the rears aren't looking too bad. But the reason I went with the 500 instead of, I think there's another size up. Um, there's the Honda Foreman, the Honda Rubicon, which is essentially the, the exact same four-wheeler, but it has all the electronic uh shifters and everything on it. I liked the manual shifter on this one. I like to be able to select my gears with my foot just what i grew up on preference and the largest is i believe the rincon i mean at the time of these i haven't looked at four wheelers in a long time uh, but the problem is these are more of a a farm utility or the biggest farm utility four wheeler that i really saw that i needed uh, because <laughs> i'm out in the dark a lot chasing cattle and whatnot and don't well, checking crops or dogs or whatever else we're looking for. And the front headlight on the handlebars is was actually a big selling factor for me. Otherwise, I probably would have went for the the Rencon, the largest four wheeler uh, engine size wise. But also the problem is you have that much power, that much four wheeler, <laughs> and I could see me getting into a lot more trouble with it. So stick with what you're used to, I guess. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope everybody's staying warm. I mean, the ground is not... It's not soft by any means. It's just muddy. But, I mean, I think chiseling is pretty well done. Uh, the reason why... I just kind of threw up a white flag on chisel plowing. I mean, because this, this literally is all we have done. And um, that piece and the piece... On the other side of the pasture there are the corn on corn fields we typically like to get done regardless because whatever and um i i heard a little while back it was probably about three or four days before we just said to heck with it let it go till next spring uh was exactly that uh, when the ground is froze on top for how soft all the ground conditions are right now um when the ground freezes where you can pull the tillage equipment through and you're pulling up chunks of frost whatever i mean you can get by with that for a little bit but for how wet the fields are right now the guy said exactly that that it gets to a point where you're using the frost just to get traction and where we were currently at he says it's more or less we're basically just mixing the mud I mean, the tillage equipment's really not doing what it re really is designed to do. And I just really don't want to tear up the tires or the tillage equipment any more than we have to than what we did. I mean, I think we hit it in a very short window where we could get the VT disking. I guess that's a good way to say it. And the chiseling that we did get done. And I would have this whole farm done if it didn't take me the eight to ten hours to uh bale and rake bale and then come up short on corn fodder and then go through and rake and bale the far side of this back piece i did everything over down to the tree line uh just to get the bales that we did so 
it is what it is 18 2018 was a very interesting year a challenging year but as is farming you can't control everything you just control the things you can't control and with that thanks for watching take care take it easy keep in touch i'll talk to you guys later